Hi, fourth graders. My name is Miss Sipes. I am a fourth grade teacher at Baker Elementary, and today I'm going to carry out a grammar lesson with you. I hope you enjoy, and I want you to do whatever you can do to make it fun. This time of learning is really tough. I know it. I miss my students. I hope the students are missing us. And all we are asking is that you do your best to learn a little bit during this time. We will catch you up when you come back next year. Okay, enjoy your lesson. If you don't have your pencil and paper with you or your notebook and pencil, please grab your notebook and pencil at this time. We are going to begin our Conventions and Crafts series. Thanks to Linda Hoyt. Month nine, week two. Specifically, we are going to focus on verbs today. So we know that verbs are typically actions. So what somebody or something is doing. When I think of verbs, I think of all of the different things I have to do. So I teach. I type, I cook, I eat, I walk, I play, I laugh. All of these things that I do are verbs, they're actions. Verbs are not always actions, but today we are going to focus on these verbs and these verb phrases that do add this precision in imagery to our sentences so that our readers can almost see what we are explaining in words. We will carry out a five day lesson today, all in one PowerPoint. And it starts with studying the mentor text. So read the sentence aloud with me in bold up top. Leo throws the ball. Now stop for a minute and identify the verb. What is Leo doing? He's throwing something, okay? So throws is the verb. Now I want you to think, stop for a minute and brainstorm other verbs that could make the action more vivid. When you are doing this, you are actually choosing more powerful and precise verbs to improve your writing. A powerful verb can express your ideas accurately and vividly. Let's take a second. Let's take five or six seconds and think of maybe one or two other verbs we could put in place of throws. Did you come up with any of these words in red? Any of these verbs, pitches, hurls, launches, tosses? Leo pitches the ball. What about whales? When I think of the word whale, somebody whaling something, I think of it coming at me at a very fast speed. So did you choose a verb that you feel was a better choice? It all depends on what you're trying to convey in your writing at that point. So our mentor text today is called Space Attack. So think about that title, Space Attack. What's the verb there? You have your subject and your predicate. So you have your noun and your verb. Your verb would be attack. Great job, fourth grade. What I am going to do is I'm going to read you a subtitle that's part of our mentor text today. And I want you to think about why the author chose the specific verb that he chose. Millions of rocks are hurtling through space. What really happens if one of them hits us? So we have two different sentences here. But let's just look at the top one. Let's look at the first sentence in the subtitle. Millions of rocks are hurtling through space. Okay, so let's think about the, the verb hurtling. If something is hurtling, if it's being hurtled, what does that mean? Would that mean something different than if uh, the author used the verb flying? Think about it. Do any of you know what it means to hurdle something? Hurdling can be defined as moving at a great speed, most times in an uncontrollable manner. So it's almost violent uh, or a rapid motion. 
Does the title space attack make more sense now? Think about these rocks being hurtled through space. So now is when your notebook is going to come in handy. I would like to you, like for you, excuse me, to read and jot. There are some very, very powerful verbs in this section that came from our mentor text today. And I want to see if you can read and identify three of the very powerful verbs that you see here. I would like you to take your cursor and pause your video for just a minute as you read through these two paragraphs on the right. We're reading the section called Rocks from Above. And just jot down three verbs that you found. I will pause my video as well. Okay, I hope you just unpaused your video because you're ready to talk about some of the verbs that you found. I wish I could call on you. I wish I saw hands in the audience. I wish I could hear your sweet voices, but I can't. So I'm going to talk out loud about what I think that you probably came up with. Okay, so I am looking and right away, I am noticing verbs that are sticking out to me. Orbit, that's a verb. How many of you got that one? Knock, knocking is something you do. Bouncing, looking, produced. All of these actions are verbs, and some of them are more powerful than others. And when I say powerful, I mean that when you read, you are almost able to see and hear and feel what's happening because the verb shows such precision. It's almost pulling at your emotions. We'll talk about that in just a few slides. Now, on the right here, there are less powerful verbs. We're going to focus on just the first sentence. And then we're going to stop and think, how could we reword this sentence and use a more powerful verb? The reason we are doing this is not to criticize anybody, anybody else's writing. The reason we are doing this is because when we first get our thoughts out, it's always important to go back and double check and see if there are better words that we can use to convey what we're trying to say. These rocks are leftovers from out when our solar system formed billions of years ago. So you have to stop and really understand the sentence. What is the author trying to tell us? Think about how you could reword this sentence. I would like you to, after you pause the video, what I would like you to do is really stop and think about this sentence. Jot down this sentence. These rocks are leftovers from when our solar system formed billions of years ago. Then I would like you to write a sentence that is saying the same thing, but using a better verb. I will give you a hint. You have to reword the sentence. And after you do that, ask a parent or somebody else in your household if he or she agrees with you. Also put that in your notebook, friends, okay? You'll turn that into your teachers here at the end of May. Just jot down that sentence and jot another sentence after it that means about the same thing, but uses a better, more precise verb. And pause your video and do that now. Okay, so I hope that you came up with a wonderful sentence 
for your teacher to read. Our brains all think differently and it is really neat to see where people go with being creative when they're given that opportunity to kind of be creative. When you're writing, think carefully about the verbs you use. Are the verbs you're using expressing your ideas the way you want them to? Okay, let's take a look at modeling the target understanding. Follow along as I read the short paragraph to the right. A six-ton orca hits an iceberg with its tail to rouse the seal lounging on the icy edge. Startled, the seal tumbles into the sea and the waiting orca pounces, satisfied. So the author of Space Attack kept us riveted by choosing precise and powerful verbs to drive the action of the sentences and create strong images. A well-chosen verb creates a very powerful impression and helps your readers visualize the action. So here on the right, I wrote about an orca capturing its prey. An orca's prey could be a seal. So I could have said the orca hits the iceberg with its tail. But hits is not a very powerful ver verb. So I changed the verb to the word thwack. A six ton orca thwacks an iceberg with its tail. Doesn't that sound almost echo as you're reading it? Can you almost hear the loud thump of the tail on the iceberg? Just buy and think for just a minute. Visualize the action in this piece of writing. A whale flipping a seal off of an iceberg to make a meal of it. Can you see this happening? How did the verbs create imagery and precision? How did these verbs really, really help you see what was happening? What verbs might you change or add for more imagery and precision? If you have any you would like to change, you are more than welcome to pause the video and rewrite the sentence in your notebook. Precise verbs and verb phrases energize our writing. When you choose a precise verb, it can have a greater impact than adding adjectives. We know that adjectives are those words that we use with nouns. So if you're talking about a piece of candy, you might be talking about sour candy, sweet candy, sugary candy. Carefully consider a verb or verb phrase before you add it to a sentence. Choose only the best one. And remember friends, there are several places you can look to find synonyms when you're looking up different verbs. Sometimes if you find the synonym of that verb, it helps you come up with a different verb. I'm going to move into our analyzing student writing. Remember it's a lot different here than it is in class, but three things we do, we praise, we decide, and we wonder. So we always want to find something in the writing to complement. Then we check for precise verbs, specifically in this case. And then we stop and think, are there any places in this piece that we might benefit from changing, adding a strong verb? Listen as I read the text to the right aloud. I want you to think to yourself, did the writer choose precise verbs? Are there verbs that would make the piece even more precise? I don't know how many of you have gone camping before, but if you have, hmm, what can I have you do? Give me a clap, clap, stomp, stomp. Nice job. Your parents are probably wondering what you're doing, but that's fun when we're in the classroom, right? Okay, Camp Invader. Shocked and surprised, we froze. We didn't expect to see a brown bear pawing through our supplies. He hungrily sniffed the air. My father hushed us as we shook in fear. Finally, the bear snatched a treat from our campsite. He scuttled toward the woods to enjoy our marshmallows. Can you visualize what's happening at this campsite? If you enjoy drawing, 
do me a favor and pause the video right now and really, really draw a picture of this in your notebook. Really take in what I just read and draw what you are seeing in your notebook. So if you're going to draw, you can push the pause button. And if you're not going to draw, we're going to move on to the next slide, which kind of shows you what I envision. Oh no. I don't know, I would be trembling with fear as well. First of all, anybody who knows me knows I love my food. So I sure wouldn't want a brown bear eating my food. And also this little guy looks kind of big. I love camping, but boy, does this give me a different outlook. What did you draw? When you choose a verb, choose the best verb. Your goal is to choose a verb that is precise and creates an impression on your readers. Visualize as you reread your work to determine the impact of your verbs. Could your reader draw a vivid picture of what you, were to, of what you write about? Think about that. Is your writing so precise and vivid that your reader could draw a picture with many details, of course, of what he or she is envisioning. Okay, invite application. This section looks a lot different here than it does in the classroom. But I want you to think about the verbs that you use when you're speaking and writing. Do they add to the precision and the imagery of what you're trying to convey? If they don't, consider replacements for them and try out different verbs until you get the effect you desire. Where can you find replacements? For the weak verbs that you use. You see these two little cartoon characters talking down here? A lot of my verbs, typically I would say that I speak using, come from me hearing other adults use them. So after I hear certain verbs, certain words, so to say, over and over, they become a part of my vocabulary. Same thing with reading. The verbs in our sentences do more than just describe action. We have the opportunity as writers to create precise images and really, really, really engage our readers. These well-chosen verbs, verbs matter. Power burst review. Okay, so I know these grammar lessons can be long and boring and you want to be outside playing, but powerful verbs are so important. Remember, a noun is a person, place, or thing, and a verb is typically the action that that noun is doing. If I was in my classroom, of course, I would be using this PowerPoint and using the food that I love to explain how powerful verbs can be. So now it's your turn to shine. Newspaper headlines are meant to convey a message quickly and clearly. And your assignment today is going to be to write a newspaper article. You're going to give it a headline and you're going to kind of focus on what, what's happening right now in your life. Could be about, um, the reason we're not in school could be about what's happening in your home life. Make sure the headline is very clear, very precise. You can do this by using very powerful verbs. Then after you have this all written, so you have your headline title, you have your headline, you have your article, go back and underline all of the verbs in your article. I want you to double check, maybe even check with somebody else in your household. Can any of those verbs be replaced with stronger ones? Remember, those strong verbs really, really help your reader to vividly see what you're trying to show with your words. You can do this in your notebook, please, and just title it today's date, ELA,
Okay, now anyone who knows me knows I love to eat and I love food. So we're talking about verbs. It's the perfect chance for me to talk about food. I have two choices here. I get a snack after recording this video. So which choice should I indulge on? Indulge, eat. Will this satisfy my craving? I don't know. Do I need something to go with them? I love food. I love grammar. I'm not exactly sure how to make it fun. I know it's tough, you're at home. You're not in school with your friends, but we do miss you. And I hope I made you smile a little bit. For anyone who's in my fourth grade, I bet you did smile. And I'll be having some pizza tonight for dinner. Have a great weekend.